In this video, I am going to cover some of the notions that you can give to the seamstress in your life. And of course, in order to be a seamstress, one of the first things you are going to need is some good scissors. So here I have a collection of many of the scissors that I own. I won't say all because that's not the case. From this point over to the right hand side are my Ginger scissors and I've used those for many many years. I'm a big fan of the Ginger scissors because they just are great scissors. They cut really well and one of the benefits of the Ginger scissors is that if they get dull or if you drop them and they need servicing you can send them back to the Ginger facility in Greensboro, North Carolina, and they will sharpen and recondition them and they will come back to you as good as new. I've done this many times over the years and I'm always happy with the results. So here is my basic cutting shears. Um, I use those for lots of things. They've always serviced me well. And this is a smaller version of scissors, and this is the one I tend to keep next to my sewing machine. Uh, some people prefer to use the nippers next to the sewing machine because they work very well for that. And then this is a newer version. I haven't had this one as long, but this is a spring-loaded. So it springs back very easily, and then when you're not using it, you keep it in the locked position. So if you um, have more difficulty with using your scissors, this is a good option. And then of course, the pinking shears. These are great. They have the serrated edge in case you're cutting something and you don't wanna use an overcast to finish the seams. This works very well. Um, these little nippers are I usually hang these from my neck on a string or something. These are great for uh, hanging, if you've got them hanging around your neck and you're doing some handwork uh, to cut your embroidery floss or things like that, that works great. And then of course there's the smaller embroidery scissors. And these I particularly like, They I call them kindergarten scissors. They have the blunt edge, which is what I use when I'm doing heirloom sewing and trimming away lace from behind uh, fabric. The rounded points allow you to trim it away without catching that lace and cutting into the lace. But these are also great scissors just to, if you're stitching and you want to have a pair in your lap, you're not going to poke yourself. Um, so that's just some of the regular standard use scissors. If you want to up it a notch with your gift giving, there are, I have only three from the designer series. Uh, Ginger carries several different designer series and these were gifted to me by a lovely lady that took a class from me several years ago and I think of her every time I use them. So these are beautiful and there's so many different designs you can choose from. But another wonderful scissors, and they come in all the different sizes as well, but I don't have a huge collection of them, are the Dovo scissors. And again, this is one I use with lace work. It's got the point on one end, but the blunt end on the other. And it's a great little scissors to have. I like to keep that with me when I'm doing a lot of heirloom sewing as well. But the ultimate Dovo scissors package that my husband gifted me with one year was this group of gold plated scissors and it includes a larger scissors, a medium sized scissors, and then the tiny embroidery scissors. So if the seamstress in your life seems to have all the scissors she needs, this is a great group of scissors that you can gift her with. In addition to scissors for cutting tools, there are also rotary cutters, and there's a large variety of these that you can purchase also, and they come in different sizes from small ones, and this particular one has a gauge on it that you can 
adjust to cut further or closer to whatever edge you're cutting to larger blades and they do come even larger than that. I like this one because I can push the button to release the blade then push it down and these are usually used in conjunction with rulers and you can cut on your cutting surface using the ruler as a guide but you also can cut around patterns using this. Uh, the cutting mats also come in a variety of sizes. You have smaller ones that can be used for smaller projects. I have one that is oh maybe 36 by 72 that fits on my cutting table so depending on the space that you have available and the type of sewing that you do will determine what you can um, get in terms of cutting mat and rotary cutters. Some of the other necessary items that any seamstress is going to need is rulers and measuring tapes. I like to have measuring tapes like this to carry around in my purse because you never know when you're going to need to measure someone or something. So it's always good to have these. And then, of course, your standard um, measuring tape. Everybody needs one of these. So uh, you need to have that. And then if you're doing a lot of rotary cutting, you're going to want a couple of the heavier plastic rulers. And I like this 6 by 24 inch one. I use that one so much, I really am ready for a new one because I've had that one for years and years. And then, of course, they come in all different sizes and shapes. A quilter is going to need different rulers and shapes than somebody sewing garments so that's something to take into consideration and then I also like this thinner gridded ruler and it has all the 1 8 inch marks on that and this one I use an awful lot it's a 2 by 18 inch ruler other rulers that aren't um, necessary especially if you're a beginner but they do come in handy if you get into any type of drafting or alterations are French curve rulers because I've got these upside down so you've got your large one and then the mini one and uh, the different shapes help when you are doing any type of drafting so for somebody that is has been sewing for a while and wants to get into a little bit more of altering patterns or mashing up different patterns, these can come in really handy. And then if you really get into drafting patterns, I like these rulers. They're rulers and they come in different sizes. I have two that are the 3 8 inch, the regular uh, well, it's not really a French curve, but the regular one, and then this one is the many French curve ruler, and then a larger one. This one, if you've drafted a pattern, you can lay the edge of the ruler on the pattern line that you've drawn, and then if you draw on the outside of that, it will add a 5 8 inch seam allowance. These two smaller ones are 3 8 inch and they do the same thing. You would use them to add seam allowance to a base pattern. And I know these also come in a half inch if that's the seam allowance that you prefer. So uh, this is a nice showing of the different type rulers available. And then of course I have probably three or four of these little mini six inch gauges uh, that I use regularly. And I also have one of the little clear ones uh, that has the 1 8 inch grid marks because uh, sometimes I need that and this is good for traveling with if you don't want to carry a great big ruler. So you've got all different types of options with rulers and measuring tapes, um, but this is a good start for anybody. Other necessary tools for any seamstress will be your pins. And I use glass head pins for almost all my sewing because with a glass head pin, you can 
leave the pins in whatever you're stitching and you can iron over it and it is not a problem. So I use the fine glass head pins and I love the magnetic pin cushions. This is a great one because it has a cover that goes over it and on the flip side is storage for more pins. So this is ideal if you're traveling at all. And you cannot have too many magnetic pin cushions in my opinion. I have one next to my sewing machine, I have another next to my serger, one on my cutting table, and one on my ironing board. So this is a great um, idea for a seamstress starting out. These are great too because one of the beauties of the magnetic pin cushions, if you spill your pins anywhere, you can just wave this over and it picks up all your pins. So that is a nice way to keep your pins in order. And the unfortunate part of sewing is when you make a mistake and we're all going to make them at some point in time, in which case you need a seam ripper. And again, I feel like you can't have too many of those. I keep those in all the same places next to my sewing machine, on my ironing board, um, I have my designer one that is a combination seam ripper and on the other side is an awl and I keep that in my living room next to where I stitch in case I have to pick something out that's going to take a while. Uh, it's just pretty and I liked it. But uh, the one I prefer is the clover one. I, it's very sharp. It fits well in my hands. Uh, I've tried this one. It's fine. I don't even know what the brand name of it is. They all work. And this is a more recent purchase that I tried. It's got a magnifier on the one end. So if you have difficulty seeing, you know, you can use this one with the magnifying end. I find it a bit awkward right now, but I think with a little bit of um, use, I could get used to this very easily and it would be easy to pick stitches out. And of course, we're working with our hands all the time and particularly with um, handling very fragile fabrics like silk or chiffon or even Swiss batiste, you wanna make sure that your hands are soft and don't have rough places on them. So I like to use this uh, glycerin hand therapy and it comes in a lot of different flavors. My favorite is the French vanilla, but I put that on every night before I go to bed so that it can work its way into my skin. Throughout the day, I will use the uh, Neutrogena hand cream. It gives a nice, uh, almost waxy type coating, but it doesn't feel bad on your skin. And you only need just a little bit. So this is a great uh, product to use throughout the day. And then if you need a special cuticle care, um, I like this nail and cuticle care by Earth Therapeutic. It helps keep things soft and you won't end up with little funky catches. So if you don't want to delve into the actual sewing products because that makes you nervous, hand care products are always a welcome gift for a seamstress. So I hope this has given you some great ideas. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and you don't want to miss out on any of the upcoming ones, please be sure and hit the subscribe button.